Welcome to A Magical Life, Health, Wealth and Weight Loss. I'm your host, Magic Barclay, Lead Practitioner at Holistic Natural Health Australia and number one best-selling author. In this podcast, I aim to give you practical tips on how to accelerate and sustain your health, increase your financial, spiritual and emotional wealth and to look at something that haunts many of us needlessly, weight loss. In some episodes, I'll have guests available to give you even more tips, but in others, the floor is yours. Drop us a line at A Magical Life Podcast on Facebook and let me know what you would like to know more about. Now, sit back and enjoy, because it is time for you to create and truly discover a magical life. Welcome back to A Magical Life. I'm your host, Magic Barclay, and today I'm joined by Blaine Elkers. He is America's only chief results officer. He's always loved to help people get results, and he knows which habits bring success and those results, how to create them instantly and stick with them for a lifetime. A leading authority in personal implementation and consistency, habit master with documented streak of 1,453 days in a row and counting, TEDx speaker with over 190,000 views, a LinkedIn top connector, lifetime work from home entrepreneur, and so much more. Welcome, Blaine. Magic, thank you for having me. I love that name, by the way, Magic. Uh, you, you are Magic. And I just want to start off the show by thanking you for doing the show, putting it together, and having what I call the results ripple. So you, you, are, you don't realize it, but you are actually affecting lives not yet born. There's somebody that's not even born yet that is going to have some issues around health, wealth, Uh, mindset, and they're going to find these podcasts and they are going to be served. So thank you for doing that. And I hope to uh, serve the listeners a little bit today myself. Well, thank you so much for recognizing that because that's exactly why I started this podcast. And that was for that results ripple. So I love you are the first person to actually point that out. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, sure. I really appreciate also being on and serving listeners across the globe. Fantastic. Let's get straight into it, Blaine. I ask my guests the same three questions. Everyone gives me such a different answer. And, you know, as we're talking niches and influences, just the amount of information that we share is exponential. And I love that. So here comes your first one. Being in business and in coaching, this might seem a bit odd, but how can your expertise accelerate health, not just physical, but emotional and spiritual health? Uh, yeah, gr- great question. And, and you know, I've always been, and maybe like the listeners, I've always been kind of a seeker, you know, a seeker of knowledge. How can I do better? What can I do better? Searching out things, even like, the, you know, shows that you've done. And I think that as kind of a chief results officer or personal implementation, what I like to do is I'm helping people kind of take control of their lives by taking control of themselves. And so when you take control of yourself, which actually is very empowering, and it's like the person you have the most control over. Now, sometimes it doesn't feel that way, but you have a lot more control over yourself than you do, say, other people, getting other people to do stuff. But when you begin to take that control and they have that empowerment, it shows up in a lot of ways. So, so we teach a lot about creating new habits uh, and, and in the areas of health, this can be paramount to your good health. I have something called the 21 second habit, how to create a new habit in just 21 seconds, not 21 days. If they told you to, it takes 21 days, somebody lied to you. Sorry about that. But also in the area of like bad habit elimination, totally different than new habits, but getting rid of those bad habits, that can change your health dramatically. And the other big thing I think in areas of health, well, well one is I, I talk a lot about compressing time. So when you get more stuff done, you, you kind of start to win the battle of the brain chemicals and you just get more done and you feel much better about it, more, more energized. But the other big one is, is your head trash and hacking that head trash. And what I mean by that is keeping the head trash at a minimum. It, it's probably always going to be there a little bit, but, but you know, your mind mind is so, so powerful in all areas of your, you know, in your physical health, 
but also in your creation of wealth and, and everything. I really think a lot of it comes back to the power in your mind and whether that's working for you or against you. So those are some of the areas I think that health can be impacted by you yourself, taking kind of control of yourself. And just on that head trash, often it doesn't start, it doesn't germinate in your own head. How do you suggest people kind of put the hand up to others and say, I'm not taking that on, that's not my trash? Yeah, so so it's a good point. Some of the head trash starts internally with you and maybe your past, your past experiences. But like you said, a lot of it comes to you in many forms. So some of them are like news media, social media, things you see, things you hear, programs you you watch, uh, the news. And then some of it comes from, unfortunately, family and friends and other people. And sometimes it's it's conscious like they kind of have it out for you, but most of the time it's unconscious. They don't even realize they're kind of doing it, but they're inflicting their trash on you. And so there's a number of different things that you can do. I like this saying, the solution to pollution is dilution. So the solution to pollution is dilution. And if you remember back to science class, you have the beaker of, let's say a dark liquid, and they start to add water, clear liquid to the dark liquid. And as you put more water in, it it starts to go from dark to gray to light. And if you put enough water in there, it'll go back to being clear. And it's the same thing with the head trash is the solution to pollution is dilution. And that if, you know, for example, if I'm around a negative person or family member or something like that, and they really piled the trash on for an hour, I know for me, I, I need probably now I need three to four hours of positive stuff to pour in to, to kind of neutralize or dilute that down. Now, uh, when I was younger, I needed like 10 hours of positive. I had to pour in 10 hours of positive for every hour of negative, but finding out what is that positive for you and then pouring that in, you kind of dilute out that negative stuff and, and the head trash. For me, it's been audio programs is probably my number one go-to thing. My mentor uh, is this guy named Jim Rohn, and uh, he has a program called The Power of Ambition. And I listened to that 50 times in a row one time during a hard period in my life, but pouring the positive positive in. That could be music. That could be even physically. There are some foods that have high frequency, high energy for you. And so all the different senses, you know, you can pour in the positive and that kind of dilutes out that negative. So I think that's good. I also... Me personally, I like to take a mind shower every day. So I, I talk about habits and, and I used uh, the 21 second habit technique to make sure that every morning I take a mind shower. So people are used to a physical shower. You go in the shower, you wash yourself, you wash your body. Uh, but how often do you wash your mind out? So I, I use an app called Headspace. There's another app called Calm. There's a Christian app called Abide that sometimes I use. But in the morning, uh, I, I like a 10 minute mind shower where I use some meditation and I really kind of clear out all the garbage of the last 24 hours and kind of get get it out of there. And that's, I mean, I, I can feel it if I if I try to skip that shower, I can feel that later in the day. But there's a lot of thoughts that don't serve you from yourself and from other people. And it's important to kind of just like you take out the trash, just like you wash your physical body is to is to is to wash the mind out and, and pour in the positive. Wow, great answer. I was writing notes the whole time. I hope you were too, listeners. Now, we do talk about wealth here. And yes, part of that is wealth creation, the financial side of it, but also emotional wealth. What would be your top three tips to creating wealth? Yeah, so kind of uh, on the emotional and the mindset, I, I think it's it all starts in the mind. And so one of the moments of dawning comprehension, kind of where the big aha moment for me, uh, I had a couple of them, but one was in college. And I went to Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana. And when I was in college, being the seeker, like we talked about before, is I saw this little ad for an audio, a bridge version of this book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And so I ordered this free tape. I got the tape and then I bought the book and I read the book. So the book, you know, Think and Grow Rich, it is about riches and how they start in your mind and how you can take them from your mind into the physical world and bring them about. And it could be financial. So he talks about that, but he also talks about 
harmonious relationships, good health. And I realized then later I coined a phrase called YTABA. YTABA is an acronym for what you think about, you bring about. And so I really do feel that the wealth, whether it's emotional wealth or personal wealth, money, wealth, finances, and all that, that it, it does really start in the mind and everything has two creations. So everything first was created in somebody's mind, and then it was manifested or created in the real world. So, so like all the things around me right now, I have this nice uh, uh, blue Yeti mic, right? But the Yeti mic, before I bought it and had it shipped here to my home office, you know, somebody had to think about that. It, it had to first appear in somebody's mind, and, and that was the first creation. And then the second creation is out in the physical world. So what you think about, you bring about. So the, you got to think about it first of all but then you bring it about it's something that you take an active role in bringing about so i think your own mind is a big one and so when you make a decision a decision can set your direction immediately now you you can't get there immediately so if you wanted emotional wealth or you wanted uh, financial wealth if you said look i want to have you know a hundred thousand dollars saved in the bank and you only have ten thousand dollars you know, you, you can't just make it a hundred thousand overnight unless you win the Powerball lottery. But what you can do is you can change your direction overnight and, and say, I have this goal of the hundred thousand turn and face that and then begin to work towards that. And it's actually, as you move towards that, you're going to kind of win this battle of the brain chemicals and you're, you're going to feel good about, about moving in that direction. So the idea there is that it has to start with your thoughts first. Uh, and then you create a little bit of an action plan behind that. So, so again, you got to start with your thoughts, what you think about, you, you bring about. Um, so, so that's one. I think it's that you start with the mindset. But then number two for wealth creation, I call it filling the tub. And so most people can think of, think of a, you know, a big bathtub. And at the top is a big spigot and the water's flowing into the tub. And the, the water inside the tub, that's your current wealth, right? And, and maybe the tub is pretty full right now. Maybe it's not that full, but the tub has a spigot on the top, putting the water in and it has a drain on the bottom going out. And, and so your expenses, the thing that you spend money on, right? That is, going out. Now, if, if you're spending more than you're taking in, then your tub is empty. Your tub is empty. And so if your tub is empty, what choices do you have, right? You have two choices, right? One is you can make the drain smaller, right? We call that cutting your burn rate. You, you can make the drain smaller and not spend as much. That's option one. Or option two is you can turn the spigot up higher if possible and have more more money coming in. And so wealth building is where you are able to make the drain smaller. So you're looking for ways to, to make that smaller. Or two is how do I bring more money into the tub, right? How do I increase the flow of water in? And I like the fill the tub because I'm a little bit of a spender, <laughs> too much of a spender probably. So I like to create more and more ways uh, of wealth and, and the creation of wealth typically is value to the marketplace. So wherever you can add more value to the marketplace, typically you're going to be compensated for that. So I started some businesses and I looked for ways that I could add value to the marketplace, but also not have any daily operations so that I was free to kind of build up, you know, build up more things. So I, I think fill, thinking about the tub and thinking about how can you fill the tub, that's number one, or how could you cut your expenses down, right? So for example, you know, we buy used cars and we pay them off quickly, right? You know, th things like that. Where are there ways that you can kind of decrease that? And then the third thing, so your mindset, filling the tub, uh, and the third thing would be your personal implementation. If you can win the day, we live our lives in days, right? And so if you can win the day, you will, more often than not, if you can win the day, then you will win the week, you'll win the month, the quarter, the year, and your life. So I like to say in the areas of, of wealth creation, whether it be emotional or financial, is that you, you need to do whatever you have to do to win the day. Right. So just like the bathtub example, if you can make more money than you spend today, then you're going to be OK. The bathtub is, is, is filling up. Right. Uh, if you can make sure that you're a little healthier today, you end the day healthier than you started the day. Right. Through basically what you eat, what you think about, uh, if you exercise. Right. All those different things that you, you could do and really focus on on winning the day and 
If you can, I like to say win early, win often. Now, the reason I say that is because I want you to begin winning early, 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 early in the day because it is a battle of the brain chemicals, right? So if you are getting some things done, no matter how small the step, you'll get a little dopamine hit to your brain, a little serotonin, the good chemicals will be there to give you energy, to keep you going, right? But if you're not keeping commitments to yourself and you're battling a lot of things internally or mentally, well, then you're going to kind of lose the brain chemistry and you're going to fall into fatigue really, really quickly. So when I'm looking for things like that, and I like to say, dial down the resistance to whatever you're trying to achieve so low that you can win the morning, right? Win that first 30 minutes of the day. And then the rest of the day is, is, is all bonus, right? So if in that first 30 minutes, you can do some, something spiritually, do something mentally and do something physically in that first 30 minutes of your day, whatever that is for you, like we're not here to judge what you do or how you do it, but just kind of trying to better yourself, compare yourself to maybe the day before you, to today's you, and not, not to everybody else. You're always going to find somebody healthier than you, somebody not healthier than you, somebody more rich than you, somebody not as rich as you, but, but compare yourself to you. And I like to say better your best um, and, and move forward that way. So that was a long answer to a short question. Sorry about that magic. No, I love it. There was just so much gold in that answer. Thank you so much for that. Now, we do talk about weight loss here. Many people battle with their weight quite needlessly, and we know that stress is a major factor in that weight journey. So how do you suggest people keep their stress down? And have you got any tips for that weight loss journey? Yeah, so, so stress, there's a couple of different types of stress. There is a stress that is physical in form, but it's the smallest amount percentage wise of the stress that you're feeling, but there's a physical stress that is there in all of our bodies to help us stay alive. Right? So, you know, if you step out into oncoming traffic by mistake and you hear the big truck horn, you know, you need to get out of the way. You need to get out of the way fast. Um, so there's a fear and a stress and cortisol levels go through the ceiling because your body is trying to save your life. Okay. And so, so in that kind of stress, you want to be able to react quickly and you want that physical reaction to happen. Uh, but that is a very small, maybe that is, you know, 5% uh, of the stress that you're feeling is, is that where 95% of the stress and the fear that you're feeling is that it's a feeling, it's a feeling that is typically coming from your thoughts. And so just like your mind can work for you, your mind could also work against you. And so I think it's a tricky thing. Um, you know, most stress and fear is somewhat self-inflicted. Now, now it could be, you know, the, the circumstances that you're in are, are very dire and very difficult, but what happens is you need to make some decisions. And so worry and stress tend to be a form of indecision. And so I find when I'm stressed out that if I will make a decision about my stress and then do something, preferably something like physically go do something about it, that my worry and my stress levels come down fairly rapidly. And so when people are in overwhelm and they're stressed, I like to recommend a mind dump. So that's where you just get a piece of paper and a pen and you just start writing down what is circling around in your head, uh, all your to-dos, all your feelings, what's bothering you and, and get it out on paper. And if you're worried about somebody finding the paper, write it in code so they won't know what, what it is specifically, <laughs> you know, if you need to do that, but get it all out of your head. Now, when you do that mind dump, you might get more overwhelmed if you just let the mind dump sit there, but there's going to be a somewhat of a release to get it down on paper. And then look over that, what I say, process the list and look at that mind dump list and, and rate things. Okay. Do you have control or don't you, right? So you rate it, you know, do it. I usually write the word control or, or no control. Now it depends on what your mind dumping. So sometimes you'll find the list either has a lot of things you don't have control over or a lot of things that you do have control over. And whichever is the lesser of that, that's the word I usually write. So I don't have to write the word as much, but do you have control over that or not? And then is it something that you can do now? 
is it something that you could do or could you take a step that is less than five minutes? So we put an N next to those for now. And then if something is important and it's going to take some time, we put an S for schedule. That means we're going to schedule that up in our life. And then D, we write for delegate. Is it something that I could delegate to somebody else? Uh, maybe you're still going to do it, but it's delegatable. And then we use the letter L for later. And so later is just something that does not need to be done, let's say within the next week. Now, sometimes you might be doing this list just for today. So then you'd say, I'm going to do an L for everything that's not part of today. The idea is you'll have a lot of L's, a lot of laters, and that's good because then your stress level is going to come a little bit down and you go to work on some of the ends. Maybe you do five, six of those ends and you start to gain a little momentum, a little momentum. You, you're starting to move forward. You're taking some action. You're also chunking down the big things that feel overwhelming, right? You got some big thing on there. Okay, well, what, what are the next couple of steps on that thing. Maybe it's schedule a meeting. Maybe it's send an email. Maybe it's schedule some time to really think through that one issue, right? Or maybe it's get some help from, from somebody as well. So doing that kind of mind up, processing the mind up, I think is, is super helpful uh, as well to kind of lower, lower those stress levels. And then it's what you're doing to win the day on a daily basis, like the mind shower. The mind shower helps with a lot of the head trash, you know, then exercise, walking, you know, any kind of movement is good for the body for weight loss, you know, uh, specifically, but, but moving the body is, is really good and studying like, what are the things that are going to help you with, with, I, I don't even like it weight loss. I, I like to call it weight release. Like, I don't want to lose my weight. Cause then I feel like I have to go find it. Right. I like weight release or, or I say, what do you, how many pounds do you want to release, you know, and, and release them. They're gone. They're gone for good. I, I, I like that imagery better. I would say for me personally, I do like, it's not for everybody, but I like intermittent fasting. So I'll skip a breakfast, you know, and I'll, I'll eat in an eight hour window. That works for me. My wife would kind of get headaches if she goes that long without eating, but that works, you know, for me to kind of control the weight. But a lot of it, I think is you make that choice. You make the decision to move forward. And then you, you have to find ways to support that decision. I also like what I call the vital victory. Like, could you have one big goal around your weight release? Could you have one big goal that if you achieve that, all the little goals are taken care of, right? It was like my daughter one time, she was graduating college and she said, dad, I want to hike the Grand Canyon. I go, oh, that, that, that sounds cool. And she says, but I want to hike it in one day. I'm like, whoa, rim to rim in one day, that, that's 20, 21 miles, seven down, seven across, seven up. And she goes, yeah, I want to do that. And I said, oh, that's great. Enjoy it. And it's just, no, I, I want you to come with me as part of my graduation present, I'm like, oh, okay. So anyway, but that one, and I did it, I made it. I was, I got to hike the most, I tell people, cause I was in there the longest, but anyway, and she stayed with me, but for me to be able to do that accomplishment, I had to do all this training. I had to learn about what, what my body needs. Cause we, it was a, a you know whole day hike and, and all my little health goals were met in that vital victory of making it on that hike, you know, in the one, one big goal. I had to do a lot of training for that. So sometimes having one big goal is better than a lot of little ones. And that vital victory can really make the difference. Two other things though, in the area of weight release, and that is you have to get your mind on your side. And a lot of times your mind is not on your side. So I'm going to give you two things to get your mind back on, on your side. The first one is what I call, yeah, but. And so you go around, yeah, butting yourself, and then you'll start, yeah, butting other people. And what I mean by that is when you have a negative thought, you just end it with, yeah, but, you know, so I can never lose the weight. And you're saying that to yourself, yeah, but, and then wait for your, your mind to answer because you've just flipped the switch because your mind is kind of like Google. It has to answer the question. So, you know, I, I can never lose weight. Yeah, but. I'm going to start listening to that podcast by magic. Yeah, but I'm going to do some studying. Yeah, but I'm going to ask my friends who's lost weight. Yeah, but I'm going to exercise more. Yeah, but I'm going to start some 21 second habits. You know, your mind begins to give you answers if you'll sit with that silence just for a moment. So just think about that. Yeah, butting yourself. That's one. The other one is to use affirmations. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of Noah St. John, but there's affirmations. Those are positive statements about yourself. And then there's affirmations and affirmations are where you put in the form of a question and then your mind works for you instead of against you, right? So you can say, I eat healthy, I eat healthy, I eat healthy. And that's an affirmation, but your brain says, no, you don't. 
No, you don't. No, you don't. Go eat the chips. You know, so it's kind of working against you. But when you say, why do I find it so easy to eat healthy? Now that's different, right? You put in the form of a question, uh, why do I find it so easy to eat healthy? And then your brain doesn't like that open loop. So it says, well, because you threw out the junk food, because you got healthy snacks, because you, you joined a new program, uh, because you put the magic podcast on automatic, you, you know, you, you come up with all, all those reasons. So there again, maybe a little bit of a longer answer than you wanted, but those are my thoughts on that. And thank you for those thoughts. They were very enlightening and I'm sure the listeners have gotten a lot out of them. Now, people can find you at www.blainetedx.com. That's B-L-A-I-N-E TEDx.com. Blaine, we love freebies here. What can you offer the listeners? And is that in the form of your TEDx talks? Uh, yeah, so if you go to that uh, that website, then we'll be connected and you'll get my TEDx talk, which it's a talk about why table, what you think about, you bring about, but I do give you one mind hack that will help you to remind your, your conscious, but more importantly, your subconscious mind about 60 to 160 times a day of whatever you're trying to bring about. And so that bring about could be you're bringing about wealth, could be bringing about harmonious relationships. It could be you're bringing about the release of some weight, but that's what we have there. And then we'll be connected. You'll learn a little bit more about me. And if I could serve you in any way, I'd, I'd be happy to do so. Fantastic. Now, I think that we've only just scratched the surface, Blaine. I would love for you to join us in our next episode. Is that okay? I would love to. I really appreciate the time today and the time next time when uh, we can dive deeper in some things, which I hope will, will help the listeners. Thank you, listeners. Thank you so much for your time. This was your episode 203. Go forth and create your magical life. Thanks for listening today. Please subscribe to hear future episodes, leave a review and share this podcast. You can follow us on Facebook at A Magical Life Podcast or at Holistic Natural Health Australia. That's holistic with a W. You can find us on Instagram at Holistic Natural Health or at www.holisticnaturalhealth.com.au. That's where you'll access all sorts of articles, freebies and more.